Uh, hello, I'm going to talk today about um, black carbon measurements that we did from Associated Natural Gas Flaring in North Dakota. So uh, natural gas is emitted typically from oil extraction. It's typically called um, associated gas and it's often um, flared when uh, it can't be used or consumed um, uh, for energy. Um, it's flared for pollution reduction and for safety. Um, but the combustion also produces emissions, um, including CO2, methane, black carbon, and VOCs. So this plot is showing the volume of gas flared in the USA in black and the volume in North Dakota in red in the last 80 years. We can see that in the last 10 years there's a um, significant increase in the volume flared with a large contribution from North Dakota. In this plot we can see the percentage of um, gas extracted that is flared um, about 30 percent of extracted gas is currently being flared in North Dakota. So this, we see that this is a significant and probably growing source, um, but black carbon, which is a global warming agent and pollutant, has not yet been directly measured from um, gas flares. There have been lab measurements and ground-based optical measurements, um, Matthew Johnson's Sky Losa, um, equipment, for example, but only a few measurements. So in this study, uh, we measured um, black carbon in the Bakken region, which is the red blob that we can see here in the northwest quadrant of North Dakota. We did these measurements in March of 2014. We did um, aircraft sampling. Um, Seriously, we flew a small airplane into the plume of a fireball. <laughs> uh, uh, we, did, we would fly into the wind direction to try to collect as much of the flare plume as possible. Uh, we did 150 flight passes of 25 individual flares. Um, the plumes were collected in the nose of the aircraft and then drawn in through ducting into the instruments. Um, the aircraft had several um, onboard instrumentation, including an SP2, which measures uh, black carbon uh, mass concentrations and number concentration, uh, a PSAP, which measures um, particle absorptions um, in a real-time integrated filter. Uh, it also has a Picaro uh, measuring CO2 and methane. Um, the aircraft also uh, carried wind speed instruments, altitude and GPS locations, and could do in-flight calibrations of um, CO2 and methane. So as the aircraft approached the flare, we would get a, a short peak in the signal from the, the real-time instruments. Um, we then um, did a Gaussian peak approximation um, for each individual flare. This um, plot is showing um, a signal, the PSAP absorption signal, shown in blue and the Gaussian approximation in red. Not all signals looked quite this beautiful, um, but we can calculate the uncertainty. So we would determine um, an emission factor for each of the flare passes in um, grams of BC per kilogram of associated gas. So for each flare pass, we would um, obtain a ratio of um, black carbon to grams of total carbon measured, which includes the CO2, methane, and BC. We can then multiply that by a ratio of um, the amount of carbon in the fuel, which has a 5% uncertainty, which is not much. We're, we know that the fuel is mostly methane and hydrocarbons. So, so we multiply these together and get the um, emission factor in, per fuel. This plot is showing uh, a histogram of all the flare passes and, and the um, black carbon emission factor. So we can see that most of the passes are quite low. The median is was 88 milligrams per kilogram of fuel. The average was somewhat higher at 167, um, which was largely due to some of these high, higher outliers, which I'll talk about a little bit later. 
Um, in, so in comparison, though, to other um, estimations and measurements, our um, measurements are, seem rather low. Um, McEwen did some lab measurements um, of lab scale flares and measured 740 milligrams per kilogram of fuel. And Stoll in 2013 used an informed estimation which assumed that, you know, real emissions would be higher and had an even higher estimation of the emission factor. So here I'd like to show um, the emission factor from flares um, relative to some other combustion sources. So wood cooking stoves tend are much higher, diesel on-road vehicles, this is a little bit high value here because um, this, these are older diesel on-road vehicles, newer on-road vehicles are about 1.5, but we can see that flares are, have similar uh, magnitude of emission factor to that of gasoline vehicles. So here I'd like to show um, the, a histogram of the mass absorption cross-section, which is the amount of absorption we measured in the PSAP over the amount of mass we measured in the SP2. Um, we got an average of about 16.3. In, in, in comparison, um, this is another measurement um, done uh, of the mass absorption cross-section for Ciudad Mexico City, which is a little bit lower than our measurements, but still in the same um, district, still in the same uh, region. This is really kind of exciting because this sort of tells us that both of our instruments are measuring the same thing that we are, um, we believe, capturing the black carbon um, correctly in these measurements. So. Now we have the you know, average emission factors, but here I'd like to look a little bit at how the emission factors were distributed amongst the different flares that we measured. So each of these box plots shows um, an individual flare. Um, each of the flares had between 1 and 17 um, passes. We can see that there is some um, variation between flares and um, especially this flare, which I'd like to talk about next. So in this flare, we happened to measure it for three days, and we found that on day two, we have an unusually high amount of uh, a high emission factor, whereas on day one and day three, it appears that the, the flare sort of returned to normal um, by day three. This is kind of interesting because um, there are other um, combustion sources that um, also have um, some few high emitters. For example, in um, diesel, on-road diesel vehicles have what they call super emitters, um, which is a small fraction of vehicles which um, emit a lot. Um, so this might be, we think, what we found in this study is that um, some of the flares on certain days may be unusually high emitters. Um, so in conclusion, my key points are that, um, yes, we have measured black carbon from um, gas extraction flares, and the BC emission um, factors um, were generally lower than those that were previously estimated, um, but it appears that a single flare can be highly variable. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, we don't know what we haven't measured, right? So uh, that's, a, that's a good question that, you know, requires more measurement to fairly understand the seasonality of these emissions. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't. We, we tried comparing to wind speed and we compared to methane, but we weren't seeing clear correlations. Unfortunately, because we're doing these sort of 
covert measurements, we don't really get to know what's going on at the well. Um, you, you know, we, we don't know what kind of operations are happening when we're taking the measurements. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a couple hundred feet. It's pretty close. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The the emission factors that I was showing were the SP two. We, we can, and we, we will based on the methane, but that, that hasn't been completed yet. Yeah. You may have mentioned this, but for, for these largely flares at production sites, or were you looking at, at processing? The yeah, these were the um, production sites flares. Any more questions? Okay.